And hello, it is Road to Recovery, and I've been looking forward to this because today I am going to be having a conversation with my sponsor, and allow my sponsor to introduce himself. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me introduce him. Uh, this this wonderful person has uh, put in I don't know how many hundreds of hours with me, uh, helping me through my own recovery, and I'm just one of many sponsees that he has worked with. And this is just a sacrifice of his own time. And, you know, he he pitched in a lot. He's helped a lot of people out. And he certainly helped me out. And I'll get into some details about that. But today, him and I are going to have a discussion about sponsorship. And with no further ado, Jim, please take the floor. Tell us about, a bit about yourself. Um, I've been in recovery now since tw- it's like 22 years. So anyway, yeah, I've had the good fortune um, of just having just an amazing sponsor that had about 15 years, 15 years of recovery. And uh, I learned a great deal from him. And one of the big things I've learned with so many, in so many programs as I call, people can either be a tourist in the 12 step program, or they can be a resident, you know, and I find if you really want to be a resident, you have to fully, completely engage and be held accountable because there's so many people they wiggle right out doing their work, you know, um, not really fully embrace and kind of like your tourists in the meetings. I don't feel into it now. Bump out the meeting. Now, for me, I have been consistently in the SOA meetings, you know, um, without fail, because I often feel it's it's just so important to be there. And so, so having a really great sponsor who held me accountable, took me through the steps, person that's present, person that has wisdom, a person that has sobriety, I feel like it's enabled me to take what I've learned, you know, and turn around and offer that to other people. And it's such a freeing experience when you can take your hardship and your challenging situations and mistakes that you made and turn them around the blessings to other people because there's nothing like you know have feeling comfort to talk to somebody it's been what you've been through you know it's been in the been in the trenches so yeah that that, that my story was certainly not unique but i did, definitely came in with a lot of hardships and i i can remember that day like it was yesterday walking into the room for the first time i and i've detailed this in other videos and i, I won't get into the the minutia again but um you know from the time that i had walked inside of that room um the conversation i had with my brother-in-law because he was in aa already um, he had said, hey, you know, it's really important to get a sponsor and make sure you ask for one right away. And he gave me that little bit of a nugget. And um, when I walked in, I didn't know what to think of it. I knew I was in a room full of strangers. It was an SLA meeting and it was on a Tuesday night at a local uh, facility uh, near our houses. And we, you know, I walked in and I I, I saw all these strangers and uh, I immediately felt like it was a welcoming place. Like people were uh, just immediately going into their shares. And, um, you know, I stood up and I, at some point I had asked, I was like, I, I, you know, my name is blah and I need to get, I need to get a sponsor. And you were the first person, like you approached me right away. I didn't even give me the chance to leave the room. You're like, yeah, I'd like to sponsor you. And we went outside and we had a discussion. I think later on, uh, I can't remember if it was that night or it was another night. Uh, we we had a further conversation just about sponsorship, you know, like what that relationship would look like. And I thought that was really great what you did because um, you encapsulated, you know, what the, what the nature of being in the program was and what it means to be a sponsor and what your relationship to me would be if I were to choose you as a sponsor. And I I thought that was fantastic because I needed that. I I had no idea what a 12 step program was or how it even worked. Um, Did you, is there anything you wanted to add to that? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, after you have been, you know, been in the bottom, you just rock bottom, you know, and you pulled yourself out. You know, one of the things that happens when somebody comes in that's relatively new and you see them at rock bottom, you know, and your heart just tugs at you, knowing how much pain they are in. You know, it's like this pull. And so what happens with me is when I see somebody like that, I'm like, oh my God, how to help them, you know? 
I pulled myself out of the ditch. I can help to pull them out. You know, I can do what my sponsor said you know, to do. And I did it. And then I got better. It's almost like you have this responsibility to give back, you know, once you've gotten better. So um, that's kind of what happened with you is I just saw it, you know, I felt it and I was compassionate. And then I said, I got to jump in, you know, and then the, the journey began for being a sponsor. And I had done some research a while back on like uh, who the first sponsor was and uh, Bill W back in AA, um, he, he was the creation of the first sponsor because he rationalized that, you know, he was going through this difficult problem with his alcoholism and he needed another alcoholic to talk to. And he, he needed to find somebody that could actually come along and talk to him in the same language and be able to uh, approach him with the same types of troubleshooting and problems that he was going through in his addiction. And uh, I, that's like the center, like that's the center of what it means to be a sponsor is like, you're talking to another human being that knows the crap you've gone through or has a very similar experience and knows the experience of program to be able to deliver it to you. And I needed that. And I, I certainly felt more comfortable that you had gone through a, a similar type of situation. Like, you know, you had gotten in trouble with the law from, you know, your addiction and stuff like that. Yeah. And it, it informed me like, okay, this person's not bullshitting me. He knows exactly the sorts of things that a person goes through and how to start walking through this, um, and which I, I think is a beautiful, it's, it sets up a, a, a strong relationship between two people that aren't going to be talking about theoretical concepts or anything like that. They're talking about the realities of what's happening. Yeah. So it's amazing. You know, <clears throat> a lot of times in people addiction, they, they just don't know how to speak the truth, you know, and they don't know how to talk about, what happened and they don't know how to talk about, it. they don't know what their feelings are, you know? And so I found, you know, once you have been hit rock bottom and there's another person that's hitting rock bottom, there's this level of depth in a conversation, you know, that is so powerful. Like no one else can connect with somebody, you know, as much, let's say no one else, maybe sometimes other people in a family can, but, at least in terms of the room of reco recovery, it's like you speak to them like nobody else can, you know, it's just safety comes up. You feel safe talking to somebody or they feel safe, you know? So, and that's, that's what somebody really needs is when they come in that room, talk to somebody and feel safe that they're not going to judge them. They're just going to support them. Jim, do you have any like uh, specific guidelines that you would give to a person who's considering being a sponsor for the first time? Like, you know, are, are there guidelines that you use when you're governing? Like, who am I talking to? Who's the sponsee candidate? And what sort of rules do I have in effect? Yeah, um, a couple of things for me is that I have to watch the number of people I'm sponsoring because I can be overwhelmed, you know, because I find that you really got to focus with people to be present in their lives. And if you got too many people, you can't be present. So for me, I like to have, you know, two, no more than two people I'm sponsoring. You know, um, and sometimes I make take three if one of those people is not in crisis because it's challenging when someone's in crisis and you got to help them out. But so anyway, in sponsoring, um, I have found that one of the ways that I, sell, I offer up sponsoring to somebody is when I listen to their story and I hear if they are sincere and honest, you know, and they're not um, kind of kind of evading and dancing around things. So you're, you're listening for those denial mechanisms. I am, you know, and are they surrendered? You know, do they, are they willing to do the work? You know, and after you've been there for a while, you can see it. Somebody says, you know, you said something some time ago to me. It's like, I want to work with somebody that's their hair's on fire. and they're, They've got to run, you know, and that's such a great analogy. So number one, that's what I want. It's people that will work, you know, are, are honest and sincere. Um, and then secondly, you know, when I approach somebody, I always approach it. This is my sponsor from perspective. Let's try a relationship where 60, 90 days and see how it works. You know, um, if it doesn't work, that's okay. And I have times where I 
initially talk to somebody, and then I see more detail what they uh, have gone through. And then sometimes I say, you know what, there's a guy, it's, it's better match for you. you know, I know I've, I know this guy, he's done, he's more like you. And I want you to, to I suggest you reach out to him to fir first and see if he's available. So um, that a lot of times then, you know, is very beneficial. I never say, I never come from a place of neediness being a sponsor. You'll see that sometimes the people are too needy and they're like, they got to be a sponsor. You know, so it's a matter of my own health and how strong I am. And then, of course, what I tell people is, I work with you, you know, but I spent all my life working really hard and I, um, a place where I'm you know, financially independent and I got a lot of choices. And I love to spend time with my wife, you know. And if I'm going to give up time with my wife or other things I really enjoy, I'm not going to work with somebody unless they work it, you know. So I tell them, um, if I have that connection, you know, and I feel I'm a match with them. So I'll tell them, um, here's what I want you to do is I want you to um, commit. If it, they're in crisis, to call me every day you know, for the first couple months, if they're not in crisis, every couple of days. You know, and then I expect you to do two meetings a week, minimum, you know, and then I want you to be working the steps, you know, and I'll be meeting you once every two or three weeks, something like that, or depending on, you know, how fast you need to move. Um, and then one thing is also, I don't, I don't want to communicate anything by text except scheduling our next call because it's really not connecting when you're just texting, you know, um, Good point. yeah, it's really, that's what my sponsor said. Don't text me. Just text me what, when we're going to meet next. And then I've also found that, um, I get into a, I'll get to know somebody after, after, you know, a month or so. And if then I might get deeper with them and I say, Hey, you know, I think it's better for you to go to this other person. Not, you know, uh, because I, I, I'm i always watching out for what's best for them, you know. Um, then also, you know, after 30, 60 days of not following those guidelines, I just say, hey, this isn't working. You know, I, I fire somebody, you know, because I'm not going to mess with them, you know, unless I see them making progress, unless I'm earnest, unless they're sincere, you know, and I've just started sponsoring the guy right now. I just taken on two sponsors, two sponsees, and one of the guys is just is he's on fire to get it done. Another guy seems to be dancing around it. You know, he's not going to meetings where I can see him in two weeks, and I'm concerned about it. You know, um, so uh, I'm a little a little leery about that. And I, you know, 30, 60 days if he's not doing that, I'll say, hey, this isn't working. So it's important. I think you hold people accountable. They need it. They need to say you do it or you're done, you know? Um, yeah, and I can tell you straight up, and I said I've seen it with my own eyes. Sometimes that firing the sponsee, even though it, you know, I, I know there's a lot of people that will probably hear this that will think that's a little harsh, that's the sort of thing. Sometimes it's the best thing that can happen to that person because it wakes them up. And I, I, we won't mention names here, but there was somebody who was a sponsee uh, for you that got fired from you and then came to me. And that beat down that they kind of the, you know, the emotional beat down and baggage that, ca that came with that was kind of the thing that need they needed in order to push them along. So yeah. um, and it, it, it reinvigorated that person so that they started going to meetings on a regular basis and started like actually, you know, working the steps. So, um, you know, I, I've seen it with my own eyes that like sometimes firing a person will be the best thing that you can do, not for necessarily you, but for them. Yeah, it's a wake up call. Yeah. Really you better embrace this because it's it's like they're a tourist, you know. Tourists don't make progress, you know. You got to be anchored to one place and say, here's what I'm going to do. Like, you know, it was amazing, you know. You fire somebody and they're you know, like, holy shit, what somebody else fires me, you know. Um, and there's, it's not easy to find a good sponsor, you know. It's just, oh, it's not. Sometimes it's, almost a, sometimes it's almost impossible finding a sponsor. Yeah, exactly. And then if there's a good sponsor, he's going to have other people. You know, so um, it's just really important 
you know, that people have wake up calls if they need need it. So, yeah. And, you know, the other thing, you know, I know that the audience right now the, of the people that are probably watching this, a lot of them are probably either you're going to be taking on like a, a sponsee themselves or they're looking for a sponsor and they just want to hear what this is all about. But I want to send through the message to like in, in terms of you and I communicating here that a person who does sponsorship it's really not a hardship. It's actually uh, something that's beneficial to your recovery, right? Uh, so it's actually, there's this mutual relationship that happens and forms. And of course, the sponsor is helping the sponsee. But I can't tell you how many times in my experience for you know, being a sponsor that some interaction that had happened between me and my sponsee ended up helping me as well, right? You know, some something happened or I saw something inside of their life that I said to myself like oh wow that was really powerful I'm glad I got to experience that and like I had like lessons learned from it you know so I, I'm sure that's probably something you've seen but I, I want the person the people who are listening to this right now to understand that this is something that actually improves you it's part of the 12th step which we'll talk about here in a bit but it, it's something that you not only pass on but it actually helps improve you in the process of doing it yeah that is just the most amazing thing you know um the people i probably sponsored 20 people something like that 20 25 i don't know and it seems like those people that i connect with are my story are very similar to it. So, you know, being 20 years of recovery, 20 plus, you've done a lot of processing, you know, of your own stuff. And I've done therapy all my life. Uh, fortunately, I'm not in therapy now, but, but I know I, I will be sometimes. So what happens then is you heal as you heal somebody else, you know, and then there's an attitude of the sponsee that you're, you know, you're bothering somebody, you know, you don't want to take their time. You know, it's, it's, uh, you know, you're a burden, you know, and really people need to let go of that and realize that it's a mutual process of healing, you know, that, you know, I've had times even with you where, you know, in your stages where you were discussing things and you were in a pretty challenged state as I discuss things like, Holy smokes, that's me, you know, and I think I'm at peace with it. And all of a sudden, up it comes. Of course, I don't speak about it to you, you know, because I it's all about me helping you through the process. It's not about me. But, you know, quietly, I'm I'm healing myself, you know. And I think that's that process when you're, you know, you're providing service. It's it's a it's a tremendous opportunity to heal because sometimes I see some people that do just well. You know, they got a place of, of mental of, of mental health and they won't sponsor anybody, you know, um, and they don't know what they're missing. You know, it's another opportunity to take yourself to another another level of wellness to get stronger and stronger and stronger. Yeah. And, you know, I, we didn't really talk about this, but, uh, you know, the, the tactical rules for sponsorship, like how that actually works out. Like I, I told you about how, you know, my brother-in-law told me to walk inside of a room and ask for a sponsor. Um, but, you know, is, is, do you, would you say there's any hard, fast rules for how you should seek sponsorship? Uh, as a sponsee? Right. Yeah, what you want to be able to do when you're looking is first make sure the person has some substantial sobriety. You know, it should be at least a year um, and more. I think years a minimum if they they've made enough progress. You want to make sure they've been through the steps. You know, um, and uh, then it's this this sense of do you have respect for the person? Do you see an opportunity so that they can share their experience or wisdom with you and you'll grow? You know, and that's a hard thing to look at, you know, because most times when people come in, they're just desperate for a sponsor. You know, so you really got to look at it. It's a two-way process of does this guy or, or woman, because sometimes there's women in, in SOA programs, have the kind of experience they need? And are they a role model? You know, are they where I want to be? You know, 
And that's a big deal because I find some people that take a sponsor and they don't respect where the sponsor is, you know? And so what's the point of picking somebody? You know, uh, if you don't respect or, or have, they're at a place where you want to be. And so um, another thing I find some people I would challenge you if a sponsor isn't working, you know, the sponsor needs to, they have a right to end it. You know, say, hey, I'm not, this isn't working out as I thought. And then sometimes it's better to be with by yourself versus being with a sponsor that you don't feel is helping you make any progress. No, oh, yeah, you definitely don't want to have somebody that's hampering your recovery effort. <laughs> I can't imagine yeah. a worse situation because the whole point of having the sponsor is to, uh, you know, uh, seek improvement and have somebody walking you along the path. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, one of the things I, I was uh, thinking about as, as you were talking about that is the I personally, especially when we have crowded rooms, you know, when I know there's a lot of people that are inside of a room. Every once in a while, I'll get a person offline, like ask me, and when I say offline, like outside of the rooms, say, hey, you know, can you, can you sponsor me? And um, at first I was saying yes. And then I heard somebody else say inside of the room uh, that you you should, you should really ask that in front of the room first, give somebody else the opportunity to be a sponsor and, and see what they say. And then, then you can insert yourself if you'd like to be their sponsor. And I was like, oh, you know what? That kind of actually makes sense. Don't deny other people the capability of being a sponsor. Um, So I started doing that like within the last few years, like when people come to me or approach me, it's like, hey, I I don't mind being your, you seem like a good person to work with, but do me this favor. You and I both attend, go into the same room, go in front of that group and just just ask the group first give and so this way i give other people the the capacity to be a sponsor because that's how powerful i think it is to be a sponsor it, it really is um you know it's a 12th step it's leaning into that and being able to support others that you actually help yourself too um so it's like i want other people to have the benefits of being a sponsor and uh, once I heard that, I, I've been doing that ever since. I don't know if it's a good tactic, but it, in my eyes, it makes a lot of sense because if no one says anything, then you know, not in my head and we can, we can talk after the room. And that's how I uh, say, oh, yeah, yeah, this works. We can, we can go ahead and uh, seek sponsorship now and, you know, have that initial conversation. Yeah, I agree with that because sometimes I'll say to somebody who said, you know, are you considering anybody else in the groups? He says, yeah, I'm talking to this guy. So I'll. What I'd like you to do is, you know, talk to him and make sure, kind of see how what your fit is there. You know, if it doesn't work, you're not comfortable with it, you know, come back to me because I think you really want to make sure you give people choices, you know. Um, and there's times when I talk to somebody and I said, you know, I don't think we're going to work, you know. Um, and then I'd say, just go back to the room, you know, and and ask people because the challenging thing I find that people are afraid to ask, you know, I don't know why it is. Um, and uh, I guess like that, that thing of, you know, I remember when I was, you, you always feel like you're an outsider in your newer stage, but just transitioning to something that, you know, I have out of the 20, 30 people I've sponsored, um, Three of them, and you're one of the three, have really embraced recovery with a passion, with a fire. You know, and then as a sponsor, you know, you see people grow and just just get better and better and better. And I realized that, you know, why being a part of someone's wellness and growth and seeing them change from another person is one of the most rewarding things I've, I've ever done in my life, you know. And, um, and so people need to hold that awareness, like, my God, you know, it's actually motivated me to want to be a coach because really a sponsor is a form of a coach, you know, and right now I'm in some various training programs on how being certified as a coach, but it's helped me to kind of say, man, I love doing this, you know? Um, so yeah, you really need to give people options so they never feel um, like they have to do something, you know, I, I couldn't agree with that more. Right. And I think the, you brought up another good point. I, you didn't say it directly, but I, I was reading between the lines on that one is that, you know, one of the things the sponsor does is it not only gets the, that 
the sponsee or the potential sponsee familiar with the program. They also help get the sponsee getting uh, familiar and comfortable with other people that are in this, that are in the room. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I know a tactic that you do, and I, I, I've taken this one on too, is to uh, take that sponsee and say, hey, you know something? I want you, we got the phone list here. I want you to contact three or five of those people on that list. So I, I don't care what you tell them. You can talk about uh, an NFL game. I don't care. I want you to call up some of those other people and just say, hey, this is so-and-so. And I, I just wanted to talk real quick. Is that okay? And, you know, that's how you start building, uh, you know, I think fellowship inside of a, a room and get them to break the ice. Because a lot of us in, uh, that have addictive tendencies, guess what we do? We tend to isolate. Yeah, that is so true, you know. And I, I did, I've gone through, I've been to treatment center for two one-week sessions, you know, and they, they, um, as you leave, they say, this is what you have to do, you know. And, um, of course, you don't have to do it, but he said, we want to make sure that, you know, you have multiple people to call in addition to your sponsor, because there could be times when you're in crisis, and you call your sponsor and he's not available, you know, and then you have multiple resources to touch base. And that's why it's important to call people, you know, if you want to, just to talk about the weather, an NFL game. So that time when you call them with something that you need their help from, you already have an established relationship. And it's true. So many people just don't reach out because that's part of I got guys I sponsor. I almost got to kick them. You know, I say, call <laughs> four people. You know, will you do it? Yes. And I follow up. Now I've called one. So call the damn three other people, you know, <laughs> because most time the addicts, they, they don't have, they isolate through their addiction. Absolutely. You know? And then and they don't, they don't know what it's like to have guys that have no idea what's right. Like to have relationship with another guy, friendship, you know, and they got, they'd have to learn to build that. And the first step is calling people. And I tell them, you know, go out and have lunch with somebody, you know? Well, there's friendship, right? There's, there's friendship. And then there's having, having confidence and in that interaction, because there's lots of friends that I have who I wouldn't tell a damn thing about my addiction to. Right. Exactly. And and exactly. so this is a different level of, you know, when we, when we talk about fellowship, it's having the, uh, the confidence to be able to talk about problems that are in your life. And sometimes they're direct, direct in the addiction. When I talk about that circle, that, that direct inner circle, and sometimes it may be outer circle stuff or just life problems that contributes to the addiction. Um, you know, having the willingness and confidence to be able to reach out to another person, because as we all discover, the, those of us who have made it through the 12 steps and you know, we never graduate from programs, but we start to get familiar with programs. Um, you having that lifeline to be able to reach out and with confidence, somebody's going to pick up the other line and you're going to say, hey, I was about ready to act out. I need to talk to you. Right. You know, when you get when you're in pre-program, most people don't have that sort of thing in their life because they're isolating so much. And it's you have to develop the muscle reflex to say, I feel confident with this person. And it's not too bad now to, to dial that number or to press that contact on the contact list because I've already had that relationship with a person where I've made that initial call. But it's always that first time, just getting through that muscle memory of, hey, I'm feeling like crap. I can press this number and somebody at the other end knows what I'm going through. Yeah, and I always tell people that you have to realize when you call people, you are helping them as much is they're helping you, you know, um, I remember one time I was at a conference and, um, I've been sales most of my life and there was, um, a lot of awards that were being issued and I started, you know, I had, I wasn't able to get those awards and I was going in, you know, like that, that stupid envy, you know, or jealousy. And I was going into a tailspin, you know, and then all of a sudden, somebody called me with a problem, and like it took me right out of the ridiculousness of worrying about a freaking award. You know, come on now, you know. And so then I was able to focus with this guy, help him, get a perspective on things. And then after the call, I felt so good, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's a critical thing that you tell people, I like 
your calls. And if I can't talk to you, I'll tell you, you know, we can schedule for another time, you know, and mostly what I do now is like, so like I mentioned, if somebody wants to talk, I say, hey, just shoot me a text and I'll let you know if I'm free. If I'm not, I'll say, hey, this is the time of work. So you can, so you don't play phone tag, you know, because it's so hard nowadays um, get in touch with people. But man, that, that part of um, sponsorship is know that you are giving a blessing to people. Like when people call me, I'm like always listening. What's the jewel that this person is teaching me, you know? They might have a prayer they're doing that they said, and then they say, I did this prayer today. I'm like, holy smokes, that's exactly what I need. You know, so really want to, those people are listening that are in the sponsee place of not being, just being aware that you're offering blessings, blessings to the persons that, that you are, uh, that's your sponsor. And uh, with that, Jim, I just wanted to say we are getting close to uh, running out of time here. Uh, I'm going to uh, wrap things up and I just wanted to, you know, quickly talk about, you know, hey, we just discussed like, you know, some of the benefits of bond sponsorship. We talked about some tactically, some things that you can do uh, as a sponsor, but also some things that a sponsee who's like coming into the program, things that they can kind of be aware of, you know, asking your sp sponsor, your, your potential sponsor, um, you know, how long they've been doing this, if I, if you're their first, you know, uh, how long have you been in a pro program? Are you, uh, you know, have you done all 12 steps? It's not wrong to ask those sorts of things for a sponsee. And, you know, uh, maybe the sponsor has their own set of qualifications, but it's okay for, a, a, you know, a sponsee to, you know, kind of check the field and see who's available. Yeah, it's a process of two-way interviewing. You know, people forget that. Is um, That's why I tell them, you know, trial period for 60, 90 days. If you're not comfortable, no, no offense to me, you know, <laughs> um, go ahead and make your transition. And, and if I'm not comfortable, make a transition. But really it's like, are you a match? You know, and you got to make sure it's like a job interview. You know, you want to go to a company where they really know their stuff where you can learn something. From. So I'm with you all the way on that. Yep. Well, with that, we're going to wrap it up because I am running out of my record time here. So my name is uh, Road to Recovery, uh, and you've been listening to my sponsor, Jim, and we've been talking about sponsorship. So if you like what you hear, like, share, subscribe, and stay on that road to recovery. Thank you for listening. Take care.